Welcome back to the News at 10. Let's cross over to Abuja now. Here's Gloria, who is okay. Gloria. Hello, Joma. Good to see you and welcome to Abuja, the nation's capital. The Senator Ahmed Makarafi-led caretaker committee of the People's Democratic Party is accusing Senator Ali Modu Sheriff, who took over the party secretariat on Monday, of working for the All Progressives Congress. The spokesperson for the PDP caretaker committee, Mr. Dayo Adeyeye, told journalists at a press conference in Abuja that the embattled former chairman of the party is working for the ruling APC to disorganize the PDP ahead of the Edo state governorship elections. Meanwhile, the chief press secretary to the Alimodo sheriff uh, has described the accusation as baseless. Sheriff is not, Sheriff is being elected and abetted by the APC who do not want the PDP to have this. It is also curious that the police claim to be acting on orders from above and allow Sheriff and his court to get entry into the Secretariat. If we may ask, who is the authority that issued the orders from above? What we are however very certain about is that Sheriff and his fellow renegades are being used by enemies of the PDP to destroy the party and to prevent it from reorganizing itself so as to provide a credible opposition an alternative platform for the forthcoming Edo gubernatorial elections and 2019 elections. The All Progressive Congress has contracted Sheriff and his courts to scuttle the chances of the PDP in the Edo governorship elections. We have credible intelligence that Sheriff had a meeting on Sunday night with an APC, APC governor from Northwest why it was agreed that he would be giving full security and financial support to exacerbate the crisis in the PDP with the objective of preventing the PDP from presenting a candidate for the new governorship election or in the very least to prevent the PDP from offering a serious challenge to APC whose electoral fortunes are continue to lose their life. I want to say with all sense of modesty that Ali Sheriff does not want to join issues with fellow party members because crisis, intra-party crisis, is a normal thing. Uh, but I also believe that uh, we shouldn't resort to blackmail for us to achieve our means. Uh, Senator McCarthy's presidential ambition is more prominent than any other politician in Nigeria today. It is unfortunate that uh, those who are pushing him as uh, uh, leader of the Chiatego Committee, Albert Illegal Asita, do not seem to know what this man has for them in the kitty. But in due course, we will know each other. And in due time, we will prove who is acting for outside forces. But I think we don't need to look outside for anybody, I mean, to accuse anybody from outside for our problems. We know where the problems are. We know it lies in our impunity we know it lies in the lawlessness of some of our members. We don't have to look at any political party, including the APC, for blames for our woes. The House of Representatives has called on the Attorney General of the Federation to prosecute the Assistant Controller General of Prisons, Usma Kangewa, for allegedly ordering the assault of a female member of the House of Representatives, Joanne Mbrapo. Also to be prosecuted is a senior inspector of prisons, Ida Ode, who allegedly assaulted the lawmaker. But this followed the consideration of the report of the Committee on Interior, which investigated the matter. Well, former aviation minister and spokesman of the Good Luck Jonathan campaign organization, Chief Femi, Femi Fanny Kayode, is scheduled to be arranged at the Federal High Courts Lagos on Friday, the 17th of this month, over an alleged 1.5 billion naira fraud. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, through its prosecutor, Rotimi Oyedepo, had filed a 17 count charge against the former aviation minister, a former minister of finance, Senator Nenadi Usman, a firm, Joint Trust Dimensions Limited, one Dan Juman uh, Yusuf, and another Olub Olubode Oke, who is set to be at large. Our judiciary correspondent, Shola Shoele, who obtained a copy of the charge, reports that the case was today arranged, assigned to Justice Suley Hassan. 
While the former aviation minister is named in all 17 counts, the former finance minister is also named in the first four counts of the charge. The EFCC has listed 17 witnesses to testify against the defendants, including representatives of Zenith, Wema, Sky, UBA, First Bank and GT Bank. Well, that's it from the nation's capital. It's back to you, Joma. Thanks a lot, Gloria. Now, the Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Mr. Babatunde Fashola, has been explaining the impact of pipeline vandalism on power shortage. He told journalists during an inspection of electrical facilities in Kano that finding a solution to the problem in the Niger Delta region would improve power supply in the country. He also confirmed that there is a disparity between the actual number of electricity consumers and those included in the records of distribution companies. The, minister is there in about the Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babaside Fashala, is in Kano State for an assessment of electrical facilities and to meet with stakeholders to discuss ways of improving power supply. Inspecting meters meant for distribution to homes across the state, the minister is optimistic that the metering system will help in accurately identifying the number of consumers. Today, the records show that only 6 million people are registered as using power. That can't be correct. So there are a lot of people using power who are hiding. They must come out. We must identify them. We are hoping that we can do this during the next census exercise. So that if we know how many we are, then we can determine how much power you need a day. And then we can produce that power and also a redundancy. Because it is not enough to just produce enough for you. You have to have a redundancy for maintenance, for repairs, for damages. So if you don't have redundancy, it means that you won't be able to generate. On the recurring incidents of pipeline vandalism, the minister says the act has grossly affected the supply of electricity, and until that is controlled, there is little that can be generated. The 23 gas power plants that we have uh, are not getting enough gas to fire their turbines. So we are virtually entirely dependent now on the hydropower which is coming from Jeba, Kainji, Shiroro, and some of the other formations whose gas is not totally out. So the impact is quite uh, significant. The hope of consumers of electricity is that the meetings end positively, as all they want is to enjoy uninterrupted power supply at affordable costs. Take a look at the day's business. Here's Melinda Akinlami. You first. First Bank. Thank you so much, Ujama. A warm welcome to Business News. The Central Bank of Nigeria is set to announce a more flexible foreign currency policy. The CBN governor, Godwin Imifili, will unveil the new policies at a new conference in Abuja on Wednesday. In April, the central bank said it would move away from a peg of the naira to the dollar, but has not yet given details. Latest data from the National Bureau of Statistics shows headline inflation rate has recorded a sharp increase of 1.9% to 15.6% in May. This is the fourth consecutive month that the CPI is recording a relatively strong increase, which is reflected across the board. According to the MBS, the rise is attributed to an overall increase in general price levels. The food sub index went up by 14.9% in May, that's slightly by 1.7% in April. The federal government says it will grant a 90 billion naira loan to 36 states. The loan, according to the Minister of Finance, will cover a period of one year. Mrs. Kemi Adeoshun told journalists in Abuja that the loan will be extended to the state government, but they must meet 22 conditions. Leading diversified financial services institution, FCMB, has opened shop in Bagada of Lagos State, southwest, southwest Nigeria, in order to enhance financial inclusion. Residents and customers at the commissioning ceremony were assured of first-class services. 
pray. Right, Mr. Emmanuel. Attaining the highest level of customer advocacy is the mission of First City Monument Bank. And gathered here in Bagada, Lagos, are top executives and some customers of the bank here to fulfill this mandate by the commissioning of this new branch. Explaining the objectives of the lender in the community, the bankers say the milestone is the bank's way of enhancing financial inclusion. Opening this branch is a further demonstration of our commitment to ensuring that more Nigerians get a chance to benefit from our award-winning customer service and robust suit of banking and financial solutions. While a number of other things are going on in the industry as a whole, banks closing locations down, we are glad to say that we are opening branches. Can you give us a clap? So it is our pleasure to have anybody here to witness this great event. FCMB had historically endeared itself to its clients for over 30 years. On this note, this customer is glad to have the lender in his community. I am a very confident customer that FCMB will keep on doing the good work. And I'm imploring everyone. I have other bank accounts, but I have the opportunity to say FCMB is one of the best that I've experienced in this country and outside of the country. This is the official content of the branch. After all is said and done, the new branch is commissioned. And banking in Bagada just gets much easier. We are acquiring customers every day on our alternate channels. So we have our FCMB mobile, FCMB online, you know, as other options for banking. So I think this is what we try to push. It does two things. One, it reduces the cost to serve. And secondly, it helps you with financial inclusion. FCMB, I would say number one thing for us is our service and our culture. We are people friendly and we give our customers the best. FCMB targets 3.8 million customers this year. With the new Bagada branch open and more initiatives on the way, more than 600,000 customers are expected on its database. The Nigerian equities market closed in the red for a second day this week as investor sentiment remained dampened by the inflation data released by the National Bureau of Statistics. Tempo Ashaju has the numbers. Glad to have you join us. Welcome to Stock Market Report. The bears sustains their grip on the Nigerian equities market for a second day in the week as investors offloaded more shares at the close of today's session. The all share index narrowed by 26 basis points to close at 27,034.05, while the capitalization fell to 9.28 trillion naira. The top three losers for the day in a list of 17 were Glossel Smith Klein, Unity Bank, and FCMB. While Continental Insurance, Tambi Kaibitis Bank, and Union Daikon emerged as the top three gainers from a list of 24. On the activity charts, Guarantee Trust Bank and FCMB, as well as NEM Insurance, were the most actively traded stocks. And at the close of the day's transaction, a total turnover of 170.68 million shares worth over 2.42 billion naira were traded in 3,153 deals. That's the stock market report for today. I'm Temple Ashaju. Thank you so much, Temple. The vote on Britain's possible exit from the European Union and falling oil prices is taking a toll on global equities. Here's the performance today. That's business news. Thank you so much for watching. The news at 10 continues with Ijoma. You first. First Bank. Thanks a lot, Melinda. Ramadan is a period where Muslims worldwide observe a month long fast in accordance with the Holy Quran. Unilever Nigeria PLC, makers of Lipton Tea, has expressed support for the holy month by providing refreshments for those who are fasting. 
The company set up shop at the Marzak Prayer Ground in Lagos, where hundreds of Muslim faithful gather to pray. In accordance with Islamic beliefs, Ramadan is a period where Muslims worldwide observe a month-long fast to follow up in the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad, who was commanded to fast in the Holy Quran. And here at Marcus Praying Ground in Agege, Lagos, southwest Nigeria, like everywhere else Muslims converge, the prayers are over for the day, after which it's all about light refreshments to relax the body. And that's where Unilever, Nigeria PLC, makers of Lipton tea comes in. The company has set up a booth to entertain faithful, which they say is a most welcome development. It is a good idea. In fact, this will be the first time that uh, uh, Lipton is here with us and we'll be uh, hoping that they continue this gesture. We, we like that. For the officials of Unilever, the long-standing patronage on these customers only deserves a reward such as this. It's almost incomplete that you break your fast and you don't have tea. And Lipton is the world's number one tea. Is Nigeria's number one tea. So if Lipton doesn't do this, if Lipton does not celebrate this Ramadan with our consumers, who will? In terms of the partnership we have with this mosque, it's a very simple one. Our consumers are here. What is different now is that we're also not just giving, but also trying to encourage others to give through the Ramadan campaign that we're driving. And you can see it on TV, you can see it on radio, on social media. Anywhere you look, you find Lipton talking about Ramadan this period. So I'm saying to you, don't just think about being a better person. Do it. A perfect relationship is being nurtured here, and it appears to be one that would fill not just cops, but also warm the hearts of those who believe in the season. Still ahead on the news at 10, the Tigress keeps Rio 2016 Olympic hopes alive with a hard-earned 70-69 win over South Korea. That's on sports. Just stay with us.